So if you're a beginner and non-tactical, this is a tutorial to master 80% of Zapier in like 10 minutes. It's not as hard as you might think. It's super simple. You just kind of have to understand like a few things, what the terms are, how to sort of like think about building an automation with Zapier, but we'll get through this together. Let's dive in. To start off with, just gotta sign up for the account. There's no way you can try anything without signing up. So sign up with your email, sign up with your Google SSO, whatever works best for you. Once you signed in, you're gonna see like this sort of dashboard. I have a bunch of pre-built automations. So like, you know, my screen might look a bit different than yours, but the basic structure is gonna stay the same. You have things on the left here. We have Zaps, tables, interface, chatbots, canvas. Don't worry about all that stuff. We're just gonna focus on Zaps. Zaps is basically like an automation within Zapier. So like what Zapier likes to call their automation is Zaps. And we have apps, we have Zapier history. And if you scroll further down, probably on your screen as well, you're gonna see some templates. So if it's your first time, you don't know what automations to build even, I would say start with the templates. If you go to templates, you have an option to either filter automations by your role, sales, marketing, project management, customer success. You have all of these ideas for inspiration. Most of these are like pre-built. We just have to configure it and connect our stuff and it's gonna be good to go. Or you can go to apps, you know, maybe you go to ChatGPT and you can get inspiration from that way. Maybe you have Salesforce and you just don't know what things you can automate within Salesforce. Go to Salesforce, go to Notion, go to Calendar, go to email. You're gonna get all those ideas of things you could automate if you use that app quite a lot. That's one way to get started. Or the other way is to actually build from scratch, but with AI. Back to our home screen and we go click on this big orange button called create. We're gonna create a new Zap. So when you're on the screen, we're gonna see something like a canvas. So you have two options to get started. Either you could like click on the trigger, you can manually pick the event or the app you wanna trigger your automation and like, you know, the action you wanna take, or we can just describe it to the copilot. So here I'm just gonna tell copilot like, hey, you know, I wanna build an automation where every time I get a customer form submission, I've got a Google form for a new lead. I wanna update that information in my CRM and Airtable. I'm just gonna say that. Basically, it's a good way to get started, at least for all the basic automations. What are we trying to build? Just tell the copilot. And now it's gonna like tell you what sort of steps you need in your automation. Here it says that we need Google form uh, with new form response as an event, Airtable and create a record. This looks perfect. It's exactly what we wanted. So we're gonna add all the steps to Zap. So now we have our template ready to go. We're pretty much 50% there really to kind of make sure we understand the trigger and action. So trigger is like the app or the event that's gonna trigger the automation. Maybe you get a new email, maybe a new lead in CRM, maybe a new file added to your Google Drive folder. So whatever like event, whatever sort of thing that's gonna trigger that automation is called a trigger and everything else is called an action. So like every step that follows, this could be multiple. It could be just one step. It could be two step. It could be like 20 step automation. Everything else is called an action because trigger could only be one. But, the, but fundamentally, they're all the same. You're gonna have to configure them the same way, set up them the same way. So it all works the same way pretty much. So we have a setup. So under setup, this is where you could sort of like change the app. So maybe you didn't want a Google form. You wanted like a job form or something. You can just go here and change the app. And here we pick the trigger event. So in this case, it's a new form response. And then we have to connect our account. You hit select and then you sort of like if you have an existing account you sort of pick from the drop down or you create a new account which is where we're gonna like grant permissions to google forms to be able to like read information from the results we're getting when somebody submits a form so we have to give this permissions to be able for zapier to read the content from the apps we're connecting to once we have our account set up our next step is configure so here we have to pick the form so right now the automation doesn't know which form are we even talking about so we need to go here click on form and we need to pick one from the drop down you can either search for the exact name you're looking for for the form that you have in your drive or if you can't see it maybe hit refresh maybe it's just not loading just yet so hit refresh it will show up once you pick the form we gotta hit continue and we're gonna test the trigger every step when you're trying to configure it is an automatic way to test it this just ensures that as we're building our automation it is working perfectly so we don't end up in a situation where like we build something 10 step but like our step three was like those big errors and now we have to redo so many things again so this kind of like takes us iteratively and we make sure we test every step along the way so when we're building something it's perfect so we test the trigger here and uh it's gonna find us a record. We click on it. Yep, looks like we're pulling the data. It's showing us all the data's pollings and we can use all this data in our other steps in the automation. So our next step is to now update our CRM. So here we're gonna connect our apps. So I'm connecting a table. As you can see, like the whole format is gonna be the same. We have a setup, we have a configure, then we have a test. In setup, we basically connect our accounts. In configure, we basically pick the right sort of data, what's where it's coming from, and then what sort of data we want it to go out. So under action, we're gonna pick here, create a new record. This could be even update a new record, find stuff, delete stuff. Again, all those actions are possible, really depending on what sort of automation you're working on. So here we do a new record, then we select our Airtable account. You know, if you don't have this configured, we have to like authorize our account just like we did with Gmail. And then we go to a configure step. Now, this is where we sort of pick the base. If you have a CRM, this is where you would like pick the tables and like the columns and stuff that you're trying to add data to. So we'll just pick those from the drop down. Since it's already connected to your CRM, it can talk directly. It can pull that from the drop down list. 
list. And now as soon as we select table, now we get to see all the columns that we have in our CRM. So we have the name, we have the email, we have the budget, we have the notes. And now this is where we can configure what information we want to like go where. It's kind of like, you know, one-to-one -one mapping. Think about it if you're trying to do this manually. If you're trying to do this manually, you have a Google form, you'll be like, okay, here's my name. Okay, I'm going to my air table. Okay, my name, copy, paste. Here's the budget, copy, paste. Now we're just going to do it automatically. Under all these fields, we're just going to click the plus icon. We're going to go under Google Forms and we're going to like just match name by name. We're going to match budget by this. So whatever your variable names are in your like spreadsheet or in your Google Form or your CRM, just make sure you map the right fields to each other. So next time somebody submits a form, it's going to automatically update your CRM. Once we map all that information out, we're going to test it and it looks like it's working fine. So no errors. So everything is working and our automation is pretty much good to go. Just make sure you publish because if you don't publish, your automation is built, but it's not live yet. So even if somebody submits a form, it's not gonna trigger the automation because we didn't say like, hey, yeah, now let's do your thing. So let's do an example. I'm just gonna go to my Google form. I'm gonna add some data. So Taylor Swift, email, budget, notes. Wait 20 seconds and now we have our data in our CRM. So it works seamlessly. Now, every time somebody's gonna be our, on our website and uh, they can fill the form, we're gonna get their information in our CRM. Okay, good job. If you're following along, you built your first automation. How does it feel? Wasn't as hard, right? If you're still with me, let's add a little bit more spice to it. Let's add a filter. Maybe we want a Slack message if the lead has a certain budget. For that, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna click on the plus icon and we're gonna look for the app called Filter. So these are some internal apps with the app here to like do these sort of operations. So we need to tell Filter like what are we filtering for? In this case, we want to do the budget. So we will go to our new form response and we will pick the budget as like the field we're filtering for and the condition. So if you're doing a name, you would do like contain you know, like if you're doing a number, you would do like you know, the value. So here we say if it's greater than, and then we put our number. So here I'm just gonna say like 300, for example, and our filter is good to go. Now we test the filter to make sure it's working. Looks like the test is passing, but basically it just means that every time after the second step, the automation will go to the third step. If the filter is passing, then we can go to any steps that we have following that. If not, automation will terminate right there. So let's add our next step now. We're gonna click on the plus icon again. You know, if you're on the paid plan, you can do like as many steps as possible on the free plan you only get two steps. You know, again, depending on how complex automations you're building, it probably makes sense to get on a paid plan. So here we search our app called Slack. So we just kind of like, you know, send us a Slack message here. Again, same thing. We have our app, we have an action event. Our action event in this case is gonna be send direct message. It could be a channel message. It could be a private channel message. It could be like a public channel message. We're just gonna do a direct message here to myself. I'm gonna select my account for Slack and then I'm gonna go to configure. Under configure, you're gonna see a whole bunch of options. Just worry about the ones that has asterisk that's required because like usually these are automations for like advanced stuff if you want to like do some more customizations so here all we need is a user message and we need who we're going to send this message to so i'm just going to pick myself for the message for like you know i'm sending it to myself so i'm just going to pick myself uh send this message to and then for the message i'm just going to say like hey yay we got a new lead and i'm going to say the name i'm going to pick the variable from our first step i'm just going to add the data here and then i'm going to add the budget again from our first step bring the data so every time there's a new form it automatically with the variable like pulls the most recent data so we get the correct data every single time and now i'm going to test a step to make sure it's working properly if i run the test looks like it passed so i'm just going to go to my slack here and i'm going to go to my slack bot yep i have the message right there so yeah just like that we built the four step automation every time you have someone on a website filling out a form it updates a crm but if the lead is over a certain budget we're notified in slack that we should follow up genius and if you're still following, good job. You built four step automation in like 10 minutes. That's like basically all you need to know to build like automation. So you figure out what sort of apps you want. How do you data to sort of transfer? You connect your accounts, then you set up like how the data is going to be mapped. And then boom, you have your end result. It's all done automatically. I hope this was useful, especially for people who love the comment that they need a quick Zapier tutorial. And let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Like, you know, I'll be happy to answer. I hope that you do understand how to build these automations because this is actually not hard, but these automations can like save so much work especially like with AI automations as well. Like, you know, we can do a video on that. Let me know in the comments. We need to build these automations like to do all this boring work automatically and focus on things we enjoy more and has more impact. Yeah, I hope you found this video insightful. You learned something new. Give a thumbs up if this was useful. Subscribe to the channel for more AI tools and workflows to get work done faster. I'll see you in the next videos.